Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's session. We'll probably cut a little bit short today. I um, am not feeling fantastic. I've got COVID again and um, just kind of wiped out my my voice. And uh, so we'll um, we'll go through a few things here. Probably go 15, 20 minutes today, and then uh, and then wrap things up. Uh, let's start out with uh, market conditions. Currently, we're dealing with um, We've got a nice uptrend that's happened here in the last week. We talked a little bit about it on Tuesday, where we've got a good solid bounce off of a major support area right around that 415, 407 level on SPY, and saw a pretty decent move in breadth as well. Seeing, uh, you know, seeing a few stocks, seeing some earnings. Earnings have kind of been all over the place, but we're seeing a few things. You know, some some bellwether companies. We're we're going to spend a little bit more time on those today on some of the bellwether. When I say that, I'm talking like you know your Disney's and your uh, Microsofts and and Amazons and Netflix and Nvidia. And we'll take a look at some of those chart patterns as well. We're seeing a pretty constructive move on. We've got sentiment, which is moving up in this direction, which is good, which is a good solid bullish move. We're seeing momentum, which has moved aggressively. Breath is the only one that's kind of lagging right here. And uh, that is, uh, that can take a little bit of time to develop. We're still, you know, we're still in an area where in terms of price activity, we could run into some resistance here. We had a really strong uptrend. Let's look at buy sell ratio. Uh, we're seeing that uh, a little bit of volatility here just in this pullback 122. Let's look at S&P 500 because um, we're seeing uh, we're seeing just some you know some stocks selling off today. A little bit of a pause here in S&P 500, but we've moved aggressively. I'm going to move to this one year time frame. Uh, remember to think of you know we're thinking of each of these ranges when we go to the swing high, swing low. Each of these ranges or zones as really really supply demand zones. When we run up against an area, we're going to run into supply. We're gonna run into an area where it uh, creates an, an area of selling. Just like when we come back to that area, it creates a demand zone, it creates an area of some buying. So when we're inside of the ranges, those are the those are really the only ranges, the ranges that are important as of that time frame. Okay. Um, and we can extend those ranges obviously back this direction as well so that we're dealing with what's what's happened back uh, historically. Um, I do want to take though that swing low on that time frame is not the real pure trend that I want to focus on though. I want to I want to get that October low in there and when we do that yeah, it's um, a little bit a little bit pure form a little bit pure um, trend zones okay so we've got our October low we've had we've now got our July August high and we've been working through this entire retracement now we've bottomed out we've rallied all the way back up we skipped from this 382 uh, 416 range all the way back up to that 433 range in three or four days rallied really aggressively really hard now we're back up inside of this um, what what I call the momentum zone. The momentum zone is anything above the 236 on the trend that we're analyzing. So if we have this trend that's moving this direction and a stock is retraced back this direction, so we've been moving up, now we're moving back, now we should be moving higher, right? We have an uptrend, then we have a counter trend retracement or a pause, and then continuation to the upside. That's 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 historically how price trends work, and they work on a larger scale, and then they also work on a smaller scale. Where when you're in a you know a smaller uptrend like this, you get a retracement, it finds some support, it moves higher, retracement moves higher. Eventually, it's got to consolidate or correct the larger trend it's not gonna it's not gonna go up forever and obviously there's lots of news items out there and and there's a million different data points on why a market should go higher or why it should go lower based on earnings based on inflation based on you know again that that mil, that million different data points and so you've got everybody uh, you know all of the participants in the market that are making their decisions based on 
based on the same information, but then they get to interpret that information differently and then make a decision and say, yeah, I think this is a good buying opportunity and or or not. I think it's an area where we need to be selling. So and the market ultimately drives that trend based on that perception of what information is available or even perceived the information that is anticipated to be coming. So as of as of right now, the market is perceiving any information that is known or anticipated to be relatively bullish, at least based on this move back here. So now we've moved back up into an uptrend. So when we're dealing with that information, we've got to we've got to ask ourselves, okay, now what what direction do I want to be focused on? Do I want to be focused on this direction or this direction? Well, as of this point now, we've got enough confirmation of this turn. And it happened, the only, the only risk and downside of that is that it happened pretty quickly. It happened in a really short amount of time here. That, that usually is good. That usually, you know, it looks like something like this where you get a big quick move up and then we just don't do a whole lot inside of that zone. So we're, we're seeing that in the last few days. Let me go back into that six month time frame. You can see we're pulling back a little bit today. We've got several levels of support on this time frame. It's around that 5.0 level on the one year time frame. It was that, that two, three, six area. And um, so we're in that overall uptrend. So now it's, it's a, now it's a matter of, of how do I want to participate in this overall uptrend do i just want to flat out buy the spy which is a fine strategy and and probably from the vast majority of people owning S some some portion of a portfolio in just flat out spy and just holding on to that and that's a and then looking for opportunities to add in to spy over time you know that's a pretty conservative type of approach because what you're buying is you're buying five 500 stocks you're buying the 500 top stop stocks on the planet for the most part and uh and over time that's going to increase that's a you know that's a pretty pretty basic type of asset allocation long-term investment strategy owning spy sp 500 stocks and and continuing to go forward with that type of strategy and there's a, and there's a, you know lots of ways to do that as well or and or you're now trading individual stocks around that strategy. So let's look to see inside of, let's go to the indexes and let's go to the index scan. So we have NASDAQ 100, we have Dow Jones Industrial Average. So if I wanted to say, I okay, I know the S&P 500 stocks, or even, let's even take it a little bit higher. Let's go S&P 100 stocks, and let's go S&P, or let's go Dow Industrials, and then let's go NASDAQ 100. Let's talk about each of those, those three indices today. So inside of the S&P 100, so essentially the S&P 100 takes the S&P 500 and just takes the top 100 stocks. I, I'm not actually entirely positive uh, how that is determined, which 100 are broken down. It's, it's a... You know, it's nothing other than more than likely just what Standard & Poor's, S&P. Standard & Poor's is just a company that has decided these are the stocks uh, that we're going to include inside of uh, inside of a group, inside of an index. And then they, you know, they weight it and they categorize it and they do all kinds of different things with that. But in terms of what is working on the upside, let's look at, so Dow Jones Industrials, these are the 30 really the 30 top stocks they're no longer industrial stocks they're really you know every kind of stock because you've got intel you've got microsoft you've got apple nike visa you know none of those are industrial type companies but they are big massive name brand stocks that uh that if they're working they're great investments they're great trades even and continue to move higher so it in the current market environment we have the top dow stocks it, which are moving higher now. I mentioned um, Disney. We'll go look at that because Disney had Disney's had a pretty massive downtrend. My, Microsoft, on the other hand, has had a really nice uptrend in the last year. It's had its rally higher, retracement back to a 382 support area, and then moving higher. So, you know, one of the ideas, one of the one of the functions of the software is to help with some of the trade management. Because what ends up happening is a lot of times people are like, well, okay, I'm going to buy Microsoft. Well, where do I buy Microsoft and why do I buy Microsoft? Should I buy it today, right now? 
Should I have bought it back here? Should I have bought it right here? Should I have bought it right here? Should I have bought it right here? Okay, that, that, it's the question of when should I buy it and why? And so the software just helps in analyzing based on trend momentum to say, we're looking for a certain stock to be doing a certain thing. And in this case, what we wanna see is we want a stock on a, on a stock chart, if I'm drawing a chart like this, and a stock chart is moving this direction, 45 degree angle on that chart, I want to see it continue to move that way. And you'll notice on this price chart, if I were just to draw kind of an ugly line right here, and I were to draw on about a 45 degree angle from over here to over here, okay, well that, look what, hap let's, look what has happened to the stock over that period of time. It, it overshoots too high, it overshoots too low. It overshoots too high, too low, too high, back to, to even, a little bit higher, then lower, and then back up. So, so, and that's what stocks do. Stocks ultimately will, if they're in a, if they're in a, uh, if, if it's a growing company and the company has got, you know, earnings and they're profitable, the stock price will be going higher like this. If the company is questionable or their earnings are, all over the place or they're slowing even a stock price is going to be moving down so the fundamentals do matter but what happens is this is the market's perception okay the market's perception of these earnings is always going to either overshoot or undershoot and so it's going to be moving aggressively to the upside and then for whatever reason the sentiment shifts or it could be an earnings report or it could be a, a perspective of something happening to say that stock no longer, the market for whatever reason, no longer believes that this is the value of the stock. It believes that this is the value of the stock or this is the value of the stock. And then it over, and then it undershoots this direction, or I should say it overshoots to the downside. And then they, and then the market comes back in and says, Hey, wait a second. Uh, maybe not, maybe, maybe there something else is, is actually happening. And this is real, this is a real time market. This is, you know, millions and millions and millions of people making these decisions. And they're saying, I, I think that we've overshot this direction. Let's start buying back in to the upside. So in terms of in terms of being a stock trader and investor, there's a lot, there's lots of different ways to analyze it. You could say, uh, I just want stocks that are that are above a rank of 90. And they're in the, the s p 500 or they're in the dow jones and if they're above 90 and they have a buy signal i'm going to own them moving higher if they move back to sells back to a hold signal or even back to a sell signal i'm going to move out of those stocks so then you can say i've, I've got a re i've got a very defined process for the stocks that i'm going to be selecting i'm going to be selecting only stocks in the dow jones 30 Right now I've got 18 of them, of those, you know, there's only one that's above 90, so I may have to, and, and, and part of the reason why these are not 90s and higher is because there's, there's so many stocks in the database, and this is actually including all of those stocks, and lots of them have way better performance. Not, not by much, because you can see these are not bad. You know, these are 80, so essentially what that rank means is that this stock visa is outperforming 82 percent of all stocks in the database that's good 80 you know 80 percent you could even go down to 70 really and say 70 this is outperforming 70 percent that means that that means that 70 percent of this all the stocks in the database are doing worse than ibm procter and gamble walmart so these are these are doing fine they're just not doing as good as some of the other ones in there. And that may not matter because these are, if you're, if you're like, man, I really just want to, I really want to own a core group of stocks that I'm comfortable with. And I know American Express and I know IBM and I know Procter and Gamble and I know Merck and I certainly know McDonald's and I know Coca-Cola. And I know that these companies are not going to, they're not going away and they're not, they're, they're going to be around, but, but their earnings are volatile. And the company's prices are volatile and and they have to they, you know they have to change and they have to pivot their business ideas as times change just like any other company and so that can you know that can pop that can that can create a, a decrease in earnings or an increase in earnings and so how is the market perceiving that and is it and is that perception showing up in the stock price so for example 
let's just look at Apple. You know, Apple has been a, a, a high flying stock. It moves higher, its trends are moving higher. At some point, it becomes a little bit too, a little bit too fancy for its own britches, as my grandma would say, right? So it's this overall uptrend here moving higher. Well, what does it do? It, it's, it's had a big run up here. Now it's overshot down here. Now it's working back towards this. This is also sometimes referred to reversion to the mean. And so if it's an average price and it's moving higher, at some point, if it's a good value and the, and the stock is, is ultimately um, going to be moving higher, the stock price will follow. Uh, I should say the company. If the company is growing and its earnings are increasing, the stock price will follow. Um, it's just the nature of the market. That's what makes it fun and that's what makes it a market. That's also what makes it sometimes maddening um, it, it, in trading and investing and trying to decide what's the difference. For you because you might say okay this is apple i'm going to buy apple today and i'm not going to look at that stock for another 20 years okay that's a whole lot that's a whole lot different mindset than somebody that says i just want app i just want to own apple during during its uptrends okay i only want to own apple during something that looks like this during a green and yellow run-up and then here it reverses back down to a red you know, a red and yellow run up, now it's shifting back to this green. So I've got to trust that trend direction to some extent. Obviously we can't know what the future looks like, otherwise this game would be a whole lot easier to play, but we're, we're focusing on what's the direction of the trend, what's the, path, what's the path of least resistance, what's the direction the river is flowing, so to speak, and I don't want to fight that too much. So we want to try and simplify the process as much as we can. And, but we can do that with a large, a large um, um, group of stocks. It doesn't have to be muscle stocks. It doesn't have to be, it can, it, it really is based on what is it that you, that you're comfortable with and what is it that you're wanting to learn? What is it that you're wanting to achieve? And, uh, and what types of stocks am I willing to look at? If all I want are NASDAQ stocks, these are going to be these are going to be fantastic companies to own. No question. Okay. The top, and if I were to take the top buy group of the NASDAQ 100 that have 90 to 90 uh, ranks or higher, you're getting you're getting the best of the best right here. You're getting and you're getting what is working. Also, you're getting Nvidia and Adobe, Broadcom. So you're getting here, you're getting AI and chips here. You're getting a productivity and cool software. Broadcom is networking Netflix. We know what Netflix does. Net net ease is also kind of in this world here, tech and infrastructure and um, Amazon. We know Amazon, we know Microsoft applied materials is also chips, which is going to be tied in here to Nvidia Expedia. You're getting travel. KLA, uh, KLA 10 court, don't know exactly what they do. Uh, Lamb Research, you're getting some pharmaceutical and, and medical type stocks. We could even go down here a little bit further. Ross Stores, you're getting discount retailer. Seagate, you're getting more chips. Apple, you're getting all the cool stuff Apple does. Intel, you're getting more chips. So you're getting, you know, you're getting the, the, the bulk of what's going to be moving the economy moving forward. Do you want to own a part of that? and at what price and for how long, okay? So those are also ideas that says that, you know, say, okay, I'd rather own something I know than something I don't know. Like DAKT, I have no idea, okay? No idea what they are, who they, what, what they do, but the stock price is moving higher if, and they've got great earnings. I can do two things there. I can say, oh, I, I better go figure out what they do. And if I'm interested, because the, the, chart, the stock chart looks good and the pattern looks good, but it may not be, you know, I may not want to just be blindly going into something that I don't understand, you know, a little, at least a little bit more about their product and their technology and what they're doing. And so then you can go in from there and do a little bit more research. This more drop down has got, takes you out to some other sites, you know, even just as Google, I think I've mentioned this before, where you can go out, go out to their website, say, oh, they've, they've been around since 1968. Um, cool, let's look at their website, let's see what they do. You can, you can get, you can, it's just in a few clicks, you're gonna get a bunch of information about um, what they do, you know, digital billboards, digital street signs, digital, oh, big, um, you know, jumbotron stuff. 
um, big video walls. Okay, that's a, that's kind of cool. That's kind of a cool technology. Uh, I get it. I get it now. Okay, so I I, I kind of get what they're doing. Maybe I can spend a little bit more time there as well, but I may not need to. And then I could go back in and say, oh, okay, I got a I got a pretty good idea. There are lots of growing that digital display and advertising. That's you know that's electronic products. That's kind of a cool technology, cool idea. I'm going to own this stock as long as that continues to work, as long as it's in that upper trend, as long as it's in this upper range right here above that 236. If it drops back down, I don't have to be married to the stock. I don't have to, and I don't have to be married to my commitment to that trade either. I don't have to say, well, damn, this thing dropped from here to here. I'm an idiot. I'm a terrible stock picker. I'm, I'm such a I'm such a loser. I can't do anything. You know, like I, I guarantee if you haven't gone through that process, you, you, you might, hopefully not, but it's a, it's a, we, we apply so much personal, um, you know, personal, um, I don't know what the exact word is, but we, we, we own our decisions and it's, it's either right or wrong, right? We're either making money or we're not. And we take that personally. We don't need to, we just need to be like, ah, it's just the, the, the market is controlling it. I have zero say and zero outcome, uh, zero ability to decide what's going to happen to this stock. I simply have to try and get in at a point that is that I think it's going to go higher based on an edge of some kind, based on it's working already. I would anticipate that it will continue to work until it stops working. Maybe these guys are really getting amazing deals with, you know, maybe it's becoming global and, and you know, there's a lot of different reasons why they could be growing the way that they're growing. And again, if I really wanted to understand that, I could dig into that in a little bit different idea. In a, little bit, uh, in a little bit different modality, understanding me, I want to go look at their income statements and balance sheets and and, and uh, some stuff like that. If I'm so inclined, I sometimes am I inclined to that. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, I don't even care. But, you know, like they revenue, we saw that on our stats. Everything's increasing. Uh, things are working well. Let me go in and look at their income statements, balance sheets, read a little bit more. Okay, that that that's a process to be able to follow instead of oh Walmart. It, well, I shouldn't even say you know Walmart. I know Walmart. I spend time in Walmart. Let me see if Walmart might be a, an opportunity for me to buy into why Walmart at this time. Well, Walmart. Okay, so Walmart currently has been in an, is, has been in an uptrend in this last six months, having a pretty nice uptrend. So we know that the in terms of direction, we want the stock to be working. Okay, we kind of have to we have to take out this idea of uh, I should have bought it here, okay, or I should have bought it here, or I should have bought it here, or I should have bought it wh wh wherever, because that's you know the the a lot of the self help guys talk they, they call it shooting all over yourself because you you should have done this or you should have done that. Well, you did or you didn't, right? And so at this point, it's like, okay, I know Walmart. I like Walmart. I like the current trend. I like the current momentum of that trend. I like the support area here. It's been stair-stepping nicely. Stair-stepping mean, meaning it breaks through a zone. It retests the zone. It holds the zone. It breaks out of the next zone. It holds the zone. It's retesting the zone now. Okay, and I would like to see this hold up right now and continue to move higher. So those are those are some other things to be able to say. If I only want to look for companies that I know and I know they're going to be around a while and I know they're going to be increasing, then that's what I want to look for. If I'm if I'm looking at Walmart and I'm saying, should I be buying Walmart? Um, let's let's go back here a little bit and say, you know, let's say. You know, right, maybe right here, oops, went a little too far. Um, maybe right here, let's say that we, we saw Walmart and it had been working, right? We said, let's even say we, we, we saw it right here. It's like, okay, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's working well, it's moving in the uptrend and now it's got a retracement and it's pulling back and I'm, I'm still okay with that. 
Okay, we can adjust our stop loss to this low point here, just because you never know. You never know if it's going to get a, 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 a nasty slide or something that, that could affect it. I always want to make sure that I'm, I've got a stop loss at least below one of the levels that I'm comfortable with, whether it's this 236 level or whether it's this 382 level. Because then a lot, as I'm moving along, I'm going to adjust that and I'm going to say, all right, what's the next day? Oops, okay, now we're breaking through that. We're, let's see if we close below that day right there. We did, and we had a couple more days that we and we would have been stopped out on that. Would, is that okay? Well, we now now we know two things here. I my risk needed to be here because I had defined it that way. Okay, now what have we got? We've got a broken support area. What's what's going to happen once it enters in this zone? Okay, think of these as zones. This is a zone, and this is a zone. Once it enters in one of those zones, it now becomes this becomes the ceiling and this becomes the floor. And the chances are if it rejects at this level that it's going to meet this next level. So let's see if that ended up happening. So so even back here, we said, yeah, okay, we liked Walmart, but we got stopped out at this particular point in time. And it's time for, sorry got alarms going off on me here and we've got a, the next support so if we, we move to that next date yep sure enough it's testing that area now look what it's doing i'm going to move off of the signals here just so we can see so now it's it, it it bottomed out and then it rallied back up it wanted to hold that that 149 level couldn't quite hold it retested it now look it's testing the 50 percent level okay at this point i i could have said oh, Dang it! I'm, you know, why don't I? Why did I buy this thing? I'm just going to own it a little bit longer. I'm going to own it a little bit longer because it might bounce. Maybe it'll bounce here, and sometimes it will. Sometimes it won't. It's like, okay, damn, it didn't hold that area. Okay, now, you know, now I've lost more than I wanted on this trade or this investment, and I'm, I'm, now what do I do? Now I'm thinking. Oh man, all right. Well, I guess I'll just hold it. Maybe it'll bounce around this 50% level. Maybe, it, you know, and, and so I'm just going to keep it just a little bit longer just to see what ends up happening. Okay. And then bam, the, the, you get one day up and then whatever happened here, I don't remember some, probably some earnings or could, could have been, could have been several things. But now, you know, now you're in pain. Now you're in trouble because you didn't set a plan to exit even a stock like Walmart at a level that you were comfortable with and just letting it go and being like, oh, that trend didn't work. Something must be happening. All right, let's just exit out and let's move along to something different. That's the nature of stocks. It's always going to be the nature of trades. If you're Warren Buffett or if you're a hedge fund or if you're a pension fund, like that's a different strategy because these guys are now buying. Like they're like, oh, we, we're going to own this thing for the next 20 years. And my and Walmart is not going away. We're going to buy it at 117. Okay, we're going to buy it all day long, and and as it continues to move higher. Okay, so so the strategy in going through and finding your stock pick is what what is my goal? What is my entry process or my edge that I'm using? And what is my filtering process? Do I want to buy stocks that are Nasdaq 100 stocks? There's there's in fact, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's probably that's probably a great place to start because these are companies that, yes, they can be volatile. Look how volatile that that trade on Walmart would have been, but their name, their their names that are going to be a part of what's happening in the world: Monster Energy Drinks, Micron, Starbucks, um, Akamai, which is digital video streaming, Qualcomm, which is chips, uh, phone chips. Um, Electronic Arts, which is uh, video games, T-Mobile, uh, Ulta, you know, every single one of these companies, Dollar Tree, these are craft, these are names that are, they have a massive part to play in, in our everyday lives. And it, they may or may not be an opportunity at this particular point in time. Let's look at, let's look at Kraft Heinz, uh, six month chart, one, the one year time frame. it's been a nasty downtrend aggressive bottoming here is that something that is that the kind of trade that i would want to try and participate in 
because it's had it, it has been beaten up so badly maybe there's a maybe there's an opportunity that maybe they've they're turning the you know they're turning the ship around okay so what i would want to look for first is i would want a little confirmation okay? even without any signals right here if all i'm just looking for is trend patterns i still want to use these levels in my opinion the levels are more effective than anything else price pattern and levels because they this is this is what the market is looking for they're not looking at macd they're not looking at even moving averages the the the, the vast majority of price activity is based on levels and so as these levels as these levels are broken and then retested and proven and hold up and then they move the next one becomes your target the next one becomes an area that you can focus on and then that's going to do the stair step right it's going to it's going to test it if it fails, it's going to retest. It's going to retrace a little bit. Maybe it retraces to here, and then it's going to break out. Where's my next level going to be? It's going to be here. So as a stock is bottoming out, it's either going to do this. Let's go back a little bit. It's either going to do. Um, oh come on. It's either going to do something like this. Let's go back to here okay so let's say that we were having this same discussion last week or two weeks ago and we said well should we be looking at at Kraft Heinz well here's our downtrend here's our retracement here's this next level this 236 level and what's it doing it can't seem to break through that and now you're getting a bearish bar right there another one another one it's moving down okay that's the trend still and at the time this would have been September, we would have had a buy sell ratio that was still negative, right? Less than one. So we can say, what's the market doing? Buy sell ratio is down and I've got a stock that's in a nasty downtrend and it's counter trending up to a major level and it can't hold that, okay? And, then, and it's reversing, and continuing to drop, continuing to drop. Ultimately, it creates another whole new bottom and continues to slide, okay? Now, now what it's doing is where would my one of my next decision points be? I would want to see it retest and then break out. So it did that. It retested the 236 and it broke through that line. You can see it closed through that line. Now what I want to see is I want to see that level hold up. I want to see it hold that range. And if it can do it, so there's a little candlestick. You can see it bounced off that level. There's a day or two, there's two days, and this is where we're at today. So it's got two attempted days right here of holding up at that level. And what you could wait for is you could wait for maybe a, a you know another white day or gray day like this that's up above like this, another confirmation bar that closes higher than the prior body of that last bar. And now you're like, okay, that that's enough for me. I'm gonna jump into that trade at this point in time. I also know that my trend is is working in my favor here as well okay so i've also got a bullish trend this this is where you know we can get false signals here and here if the buy sell ratio is less than one and the market is trending lower then these are areas that are going to these are going to these are going to be a, an attempted shot at an uptrend but it just turns out to be a counter trend retracement could this one be another one yes it certainly could be and you know in this case the buy sell ratio was up on um but it just that just didn't help for a stock like this because whatever re for whatever reason the company wasn't doing very well so the trend is moving lower so you still want to be paying attention to the trend on the stock itself um and if it's a pretty nasty downtrend you have to be aware of that but in this case and especially if you're trying to pick a bottom like this that's why i want to work with stocks that are already moving higher because now every single one of those pullbacks becomes a bounce zone it should bounce here if it doesn't it should bounce here if it doesn't it should bounce here at this point if it doesn't it's probably in a downtrend and so i can maybe make one maybe two maybe even three attempted trades and um and, and still be okay because i'm still in an uptrend in this case i'm in a downtrend and i'm trying to get that bottom it's a little earlier entry um strategy but it's uh, but it's still a strategy to focus on so hopefully that's helpful in looking for because i know there's a lot of stocks to consider there's a lot of you know there's a lot a lot of 
uh, things, a lot of stocks that are unknown, a lot of stocks that are moving high, a lot of stocks that are retracing and and um, and extremely volatile. In fact, we've seen um, we've seen there's quite a bit of volatility in a couple of portfolio stocks that have been stopped out. I think CABA, no, that wasn't one of them. That actually is working. Um, it was oh, it was Cipher, CIFR. This this stock, this little crypto stock. This is this is an extremely volatile stock. It's a muscle stock. It's a 99 ranker, but it is it, it's in that group that creates extreme volatility. So there's a lot higher risk when that starts to happen. That's why adjusting stop losses as it's moving higher, so that you've got a a, a line in the sand just in case a snare like this happens where it drops 14, 15, 16 percent in a day. If it breaks a level and starts to move higher, adjust that stop loss to the next level. So here you have a stop loss at this point. If you're following along with this continuing um, uptrend here, a stop loss below that after it's hit that level. So our initial stop would have been down here, rally, counter trend, it's moving higher, adjust the stop. Rally, it breaks the next level, adjust the stop. Okay, so now it's broken through this level we have a stop loss here. It shouldn't. It shouldn't break that level again. If it does, we need to be out, and and not nest and not whine about it or cry or fr be frustrated. But that's you know sometimes I cry when it comes to these things. But they, uh, it's it just it's just it's just the game, right? It, it really is. It's there's there's no way to be a hundred percent right. Um, we just want to be. We want to be looking for. Um, it, and, and if this kind of volatility is is the volatility that I don't want to participate in, then you need to stick with these names. You need to stick with the NASDAQ 100, S&P 100 um, stocks, Dow stocks. Okay? You're going to get volatility, but not nearly as much as you would on something like some of these other muscle stock names. There's 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 a trade off, you know, and that's the reward to risk on some of these like like AAOI. This one has been a high flyer. And it's got a new buy signal, a new uptrend right here. Oh, it's time of day. There we go. I end up getting. Um, we're back up in this buy zone. It had a pretty big retracement. And look at that retracement. That's a you know that's a huge retracement from 16 back to seven, but from seven back to 10, and then potentially 10 back to whatever. Right? It's climbing that ladder now, and the, those are opportunities. As long as you have rules set for yourself on your risk management. To buy a stock is easy. To buy a stock in an uptrend is easy. To sell a stock after you've bought it that starts to reverse, that's the hard part because we get linked to it. We want it to work. We don't want to sell out too soon because what if it bounces? Well, what if I sell here and then it bounces the next day? Well, it's it's it, that, that might happen. It might not happen. You've got to make sure that you're structured so that you know your rules. You know where your risk tolerance is so that if it does get... If you do get stopped out, you're out 100 bucks, 200 bucks, whatever that rule was set for you, and it's not an issue. You move on to the next one. It's it's you know it's just you're going to have some winners, you're going to have some losers over time. You're going to have more either either more bigger winners than losers or more winners than losers, and uh, and ultimately be able to grow that account over time. I'm going to end on that note. I sure appreciate everyone's time and effort. Apologize for my. Uh, congestedness today but uh felt good enough to be able to to come in and uh, participate so we'll end on that that note thanks everyone we'll see you next time bye now